In the video, you'll learn how to assemble the gearboxes and get some additional tips and tricks. After downloading and extracting the directory, you should see the following folders and files. In the Print and Part List folder, you'll find an overview of all the STL files with details on material consumption, print time, and more. On the right side, you'll see a list of all the parts needed for assembly. When you start printing, import the STL files into the slicer of your choice. You may need to scale the files to the correct size and align them properly. Arrange the objects as shown in the video and ensure the parts are printed with support. I printed the larger parts, like the ring gear, output, and gearbox mount with an infill density of 50%. I printed the planet gear and sun gear with an infill density of 75%. After printing all the parts, you can start the assembly process. First, we need to test whether the parts fit together properly. The planetary gears and sun gear should rotate smoothly inside the ring gear and output without much resistance, as shown in the video. Whether you're building a small or large gearbox, the assembly process is always the same. Once everything fits, you can start preparing the parts. First, remove the support structures. Afterward, prepare the parts with inserted nuts. For the output, use one centimeter long nuts. The nuts can easily be embedded into the part using a soldering iron. This is how the fully prepared output should look. Next, prepare the gearbox mount. Again, use inserted nuts so that you can screw everything together later. Sometimes it's easier to hold the nuts with pliers and then embed them directly into the part. Lastly, prepare the ring gear where inserted nuts are also embedded. A bracket can be attached later depending on how the gear will be used. Once that's done, sand the parts slightly to get a smoother surface. In the ring gear, there are pre-installed ball bearings, and we also lightly sand the surface so the balls can move smoothly. Once that's done, we can begin pressing the 3mm steel balls into the bearing. The balls should be pressed into the bearing with some force and should not fall out on their own. It's possible that the balls may not stay in place depending on your printer and slicer settings. Holes and cavities can sometimes be slightly smaller or larger. If the balls don't hold by themselves, it's not a big issue. You'll just need to proceed with a bit more caution during the following assembly steps. Once all the balls are inserted, we can move on to the next part. A bearing has also been integrated into the gearbox output. Here, we also sand the area where the balls will be inserted. You can use regular sandpaper or a Dremel. However, be careful not to sand off too much. Often, where the print head starts a new layer, a small ridge is formed, which can easily be removed with a Dremel. If you don't have a Dremel, sandpaper will work just fine. Next, we can insert the steel balls here as well. These are six millimeters in diameter.
At this point, you should have all the parts prepared for the final assembly. For this gearbox, I am using a NEMA 17 motor. However, depending on the gearbox you've chosen, you can also use a NEMA 23 motor. On the back of the ring gear, there are special cutouts for the respective motor. With some force, it can be pressed into the correct position. If you want to mount a NEMA 17 motor, you'll need four 10 mm long countersunk screws. These are screwed through the front of the ring gear into the motor. For mounting a NEMA 23 motor, the countersunk screws need to be at least 14 millimeters long and are secured from the back with a washer and nut. Once the motor is mounted, we can attach the sun gear to the motor shaft. Again, it doesn't hurt to sand the surfaces of the sun gear. Depending on which motor you're using, make sure to use the correct sun gear as the motor shaft thickness varies. Next, we can place the planet gears into the gearbox. Pay attention to the top and bottom sides of the planets. With the smaller gear, this is easy to see, but with larger gears, it's not as crucial. Usually, one side fits better into the ring gear, and the other side fits better into the output. Test it and see which way the planets rotate best within the gearbox, and adjust them accordingly. If everything fits, the gears should rotate as shown in the video when the motor is powered. Now we can begin greasing the entire gearbox. The gearbox will run much quieter and friction will be reduced with the grease. A little goes a long way. Just apply a small amount and let the gears turn to distribute it evenly. Be sure to also grease the other parts like the output and gearbox mount. Finally, we can place the output onto the ring gear with the planets. Then, place the bearing over the output shaft. The gearbox mount holds all the parts together. With some force, it can be placed into the correct position. Make sure to align it properly so that the inserted nuts in the gearbox mount line up with the holes in the ring gear. The two parts are then connected using 14 mm bolts. If you have a power drill, you can use it to speed up the process of screwing everything together. Once everything is screwed in, you should have a fully assembled gearbox, ready for testing and building. Enjoy building your project.